Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you would continue to watch over, and Lord, we praise your holy name. We thank you for our salvation. But Lord, many of us forget sometimes that our salvation is not the end of things, it's the beginning of things. And so, Lord, you've given us great privilege that goes along with that, Lord. You've given us gifts and blessings to live a life that is full and free from fear and guilt and shame. Lord, to take and watch over uh, the way you watch over us, uh, even in the midst of all the turmoils and storms and struggles of life. And Lord, we, we think sometimes there, there's this uh, bad idea that goes about, Lord, that when we accept you, Christ Jesus, that we're done with this world. On the contrary, Lord, we have more to do than ever in this world. We have more responsibility in ever, than ever in this world. To be salt and light, to be a witness and a testimony, to engage this world so that they can know you, Christ Jesus, as Lord and Savior. Christ, we pray your protection again upon all those who believe. And Lord, for those who do not believe, we pray that you would turn their heart to you this very day, this very hour. For we ask these things, Christ Jesus, in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1. We're going to start in Jeremiah tonight. Jeremiah is an extremely interesting book. Uh, I had the first time I read the Bible through, of all the books of the Bible, I had the hardest time understanding Jeremiah of any other book. Some of it's very straightforward. It's got some great stuff in it, but I, I couldn't, just couldn't figure it out. It just didn't, it was a head scratcher to me, and it just kind of made sense, didn't make sense to me. This has been some years ago, like I said, the very first time I read the Bible through, and I've read the Bible through a number of times since then. And one of the things I hadn't figured out, that Jeremiah is not in chronological order. It's got flashbacks in it and things like that. It's kind of a personal testimony, a personal biography of his. We know more about the prophet Jeremiah than we do any other prophet. He's told us more about himself and all the other things that are going on. We know much about his, the historical background. He uh, was a prophet and prophesied during the reigns of five of the kings of Judah. Uh, he was a contemporary with Daniel. Uh, he watched and witnessed personally the fall and destruction of the, of the city of Jerusalem. That's what the book of Lamentations is all about. Uh, his personal reflections on that. Uh, he watched as Nebuchadnezzar came marching in and put an end to the southern kingdom of Judah. He watched as he was forcibly taken over into Egypt uh, and saw those struggles that were going on at that time. Judah was in the jaws and the pinchers between Egypt and Babylon, two great powers, and they were right in the middle of it. Some of that was good, some of that was bad, and Jeremiah was there and saw it all and prophesied about all of it. His mentor, his, if you will, was a man who lived a hundred years before he did, and that's Isaiah. Uh, he comes quite a bit after Isaiah, and yet uh, there are a lot of uh, affinity between him and Isaiah. There's another book in the Bible that shows a lot of, uh, uh, that Jeremiah receives a lot of instruction from, and that's the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, so there are a lot of similarities in the, in the book of Deuteronomy uh, in doing that. Also, Jeremiah is very, very important. In fact, in some places he's called the prophet. Uh, he is very important in the, uh, in the New Testament. Uh, we see that he is uh, uh, taken and thought of uh, very highly in the New Testament, that uh, Jesus quotes him. Uh, he uh, takes and gives a lot of uh, emphasis into New Testament scripture. Uh, like Isaiah, G uh, Jeremiah was one of the few Old Testament prophets that could see into the days of Jesus Christ. God gave him that idea and gave him those prophecies. It is Jeremiah who prophesied about Rachel weeping for her children and the slaying of the innocents when Jesus was born. You can find that in Matthew chapter 2. Uh, verses 17 and 18. Then that which was fulfilled by Jeremy, which is the New Testament word name for Jeremiah, uh, by Jeremy the prophet saying in Ramah there were, uh, was a voice heard, lamentation, weeping, great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Also at Jeremiah's birth, excuse me, at Jesus' birth, it is Jeremiah who it is the Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, uh, 
who is thinking of Jeremiah, he says in Luke chapter 1, verse 70, and as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies from the hand of all that hate us. And also we see in verses 75, and following in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life, and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord, prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of of their sins. And so Jeremiah uh, speaks uh, uh, very highly into the life and the work of Jesus Christ. We see that Jesus uh, quotes Jeremiah in Mark chapter 11 uh, with the, the take and the uh, the cleansing of the temple when he comes in in Mark chapter 11 verse 17 and Jesus taught saying to them is it not written my house shall be called of all nations a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves and this is a quotation from Jeremiah it is Jeremiah who is the writer of the book of Hebrews has in mind when he speaks of the new covenant he says, for a finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not saith the Lord. And verse 13 says, in that he said a new covenant, he had made the first old. Now that which is decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. So Jeremiah had great influence uh, upon this. And of course it is Jeremiah who gives us the great uh, descriptions that we find in Revelations chapters 14 through 18 about the destruction of of Babylon. Jeremiah is a very important prophet in both the Old and in the New Testament. He is called one of the great or one of the major prophets in both the Christian and in the Jewish faith and in fact is recognized, even though he is not mentioned by name, is recognized as one of the great prophets in Islam. Of course they take an Islamic bent on all that. But Jeremiah was a great prophet. Now that is very, very very unusual considering this. We're going to get into the scriptures here in just a moment. We're going to start this. I just want you to see what a wonderful book Jeremiah really is and how important it is and how it's exciting, I think, this journey will be together as we take and look at this. But Jeremiah was a man whose life was very much sought after. He was a man who was very much hated during his time. He was faithful as a prophet, but he was often seen by his own people as a traitor. You see, I told you that there were to, the, the nation was between the, uh, the jaws of Egypt and Assyria uh, at this time, and then, and, and then Babylon as it comes in and defeats Assyria. Uh, Assyria had defeated and, and extinguished from the map the northern kingdom, the ten tribes of Israel. They were gone. It was Assyria that took them out. Egypt tried to make uh, treaties with Egypt. I mean, Judah tried to make treaties with Egypt to keep uh, Assyria off their doorstep. In fact, it is God who takes and brings a plague upon the Assyrians to save the city of Jerusalem. Uh, and so the Assyrians take and withdraw. And yet they were still uh, under that pressure at that time. But Jeremiah was seen as a traitor because he said, don't trust the Egyptians. Don't trust them. In fact, when Babylonia rose, he said, go ahead and come under the yoke of Babylon. It will be okay at that point in time and everything. But they didn't do that. They didn't take his advice, King Zedekiah, as we get into that. In fact, when it came time that the Babylonians took many into the first exile, including Daniel, uh, Jeremiah recommended that the remnants stay there, stay in the land. They also did not do that. That's when they fled to Egypt where he told them not to go and they took him with him. Took him with him. But Jeremiah's life was full of danger. And uh, we see that he was a man from Anathoth. Anathoth, excuse me, I left the N.A. out. Anathoth, that's a little village uh, north of Jerusalem in the, in, the, in the land of the Benjamites. And we see in his own word that the men of Anathoth wanted to kill him. We see in his own word that his own family wanted to get rid of him. Wanted to take him and, and get rid of him and, and everything. The priest of Judah, 
uh, put a contract on his head. They desired to kill him. We'll get into all these stories later on. King Zedekiah had him pri imprisoned into the mire and the muck. Uh, he was going to kill him, and then, Ze and then Jeremiah prophesied, and Zedekiah made a deal with him and everything. And then he was going to take and be turned over to the princes of Judah, and they wanted to kill him. Nobody liked Jeremiah. He was not a very popular prophet. Uh, because he refused to preach anything other than the truth of God. And we're going to see one of the reasons very quickly here why he was not pro uh, uh, a, prof uh, excuse me, a popular man in his very own calling. Follow with me in Jeremiah chapter 1, starting in verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 10 here tonight. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It, also, it came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Jos uh, Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go, all, uh, go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down and destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Father God, we ask your expressed desire and blessing upon your word tonight. May it speak to our heart, Lord. May we stand, even under persecution, Lord. May we stand as Jeremiah stood for your word. For we ask it, Christ Jesus, in your precious and holy name. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, folks, there's actually a lot in here. Most of us are familiar with uh, starting in verse 4 about God calling Jeremiah. But I want you to know that you will have a much better understanding of calling of Jeremiah if you understand a little bit better those first three verses. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, that is an important factor in this. The son of Hilkiah. Jeremiah was a very popular name. In fact, there are eight other Jeremiahs in Scripture. Uh, and so the son of Hilkiah was used to take and separate him from all the others. We have his surname, we have his town that he is from, his father's name, and all these things. And so he is separated out. And so when you understand that and read that with verse 5, when he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God knew exactly which one of all those Jeremiahs, and you can go ahead and bet that there were many other Jeremiahs not mentioned in Scripture. Out of all those Jeremiahs, God knew exactly which Jeremiah he was calling. Let me tell you, when he's talking to Carolyn, you can know he knows which Carolyn he's talking to. And you can know he knows which Ray he's talking to. And you can know that he knows which Jimmy he's talking to. God knows who he's talking to, folks. And so when God speaks to you, you can know that God knows. God know who, knew exactly who Jeremiah was and what his plans were for him before he was even born. In fact, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, literally before, not before he was born, but before you were conceived, before the seed was planted in your mother, I knew who you were. I already had a plan for you. Folks, that ought to give you some comfort tonight. Some strength tonight that if God has that plan for you, Lord, we, we can follow through with courage and conviction of that plan. And he then tells us about those reigns, verses 2 through 3. I mentioned that he reigned during the lives of five different kings. In fact, he only mentions three of them. He does not mention Jehoahaz and does not mention Jehoiachin uh, because they only reigned for three months each. Uh, three months each. 
And so he, uh, these other kings reigned for uh, anywhere from 21 to 11 years each. And then he talks about the carrying away of the captivity of Jerusalem. And we don't even know how long he may have uh, uh, taken. We do know he made it to Egypt. We have uh, the scriptures that tell us about that. We just don't know how long he prophesied in Egypt. Most accounts say about 10 years. That meant his, his total ministry was about 50 to 51 years long. So God had a plan for him. There's something else that we can see in this word here. When he says, I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee before you came out of the womb. I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. This is God saying this thing about the future and about his plan for Jeremiah. Number one, you can see that he was chosen. I knew thee, I formed thee. He was consecrated. I sanctified thee. I set you apart and he was installed if you will. I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah's father it says his father was a priest but Jeremiah did not come out of the school of prophets. Jeremiah didn't have any ties to the, to the priesthood in Jerusalem at the temple. He's in this little backwater town of Anathoth uh, and, and doing that. Jeremiah had no royal blood in his him as Isaiah did. Isaiah was a prince of, of the nation uh, in doing that. And God said, I called you. Don't, don't worry about your credentials that everybody else wants. Don't worry about all your PhDs and all the other things, all, uh, uh, all the other things that go along with that. God says, I called you. Folks, when God has called you, you don't need anything else. You don't need to go any further uh, than that, than to be obedient in what God has called you to do. And Jeremiah then says this. He says, Oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Now God gets aggravated with Moses because Moses gives excuses about his inabilities. You can go back and read that in Exodus chapter 3 and everything. But Jeremiah only gives this one thing. He says, I am a child. Now we usually misinterpret that. The fact of the matter is, even if you read in the book of Exodus talking about when Joshua is going to take over for, for the son of none, he's called a child even though he's 33 years old at that time. The word here, child, doesn't mean that he was young in age, but that he was inexperienced. He's probably about 20 years old. We know Jeremiah lived at least into his 70s. And if his, and if his, and if his uh, ministry was about 50 years long, this would make him somewhere in his late teens and early 20s, somewhere around 20 years old. But he says, I'm a child in experience. I don't have any background. I don't have any experience uh, in this. I, I remember when I first uh, uh, started preaching, and, uh, uh, and I've exhausted all those stories, and I'm sure that I've forgotten more than I've told here and everything. But when I first started preaching, I was still working. Uh, I was bivocational. I was still working for Heilig Meyer's Furniture. And so when I preached, I told a lot of Heilig Meyer stories. I didn't know a lot about, the, about preaching. I had never been to seminary. I didn't have a formal education with that. I'd been to college, but I hadn't been to seminary or anything like that. Uh, I didn't know how to do the Lord's Supper. I didn't know how to do a funeral. I had to call Sydney's Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy, how do you do a funeral? I had to go buy a book and read how to do the Lord's Supper. I didn't have the experience uh, that I, I, I needed uh, to do that. And I had one fella in my church who, who used to, all the time he would give me, he would come out there. He was a great supporter and really lifted me up all the time, a great encourager. But all the time he would tell me, going out, boy, that was another good Heilig Meyer story. You know, he was his way of telling me, so we're tired of hearing about Heilig Meyers. Let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> And so he was, that's what Jeremiah was saying. He said, God, I, I'm inexperienced. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be a prophet. I don't know how to do that. But the Lord said to me, say not that I am a child, for you shall go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. The, the, the disciples learned later on uh, after Jesus, when they got up and spoke, they spoke and they were, people were amazed, they speak as learned men, these backwater, uneducated fishermen, because folks, it was the Holy Spirit that was speaking through them. And so God said, you trust in me. 
just as I gave Moses his abilities, I'm going to give you experience and wisdom beyond compare. Now, I might say I don't have any experience, but can you think of anybody that's got more experience than God himself? God is experienced, folks. <laughs> God is experienced. When you go back to the creation, the first, first few chapters of the Bible and everything, all those chapters that before Moses, remember Moses wrote that. Who do you think told him about how the world was created? It was God himself. God is experienced. He told Jeremiah, don't you worry about that. You go and preach, I'm going to be with you. Don't be afraid of their faces, for I am with thee deliver thee, saith the Lord. I, I, I remember that experience myself, and I can't tell you how many young men I've talked to that get their first opportunity to preach, or I'll ask them to do something. Preacher, I can't get up there in front of all those people. I can't get up there with all those people looking at me. Some of y'all might feel the same way. If I was asked you to get up here and give a speech or to say something, I can't get up here in front of all those people. That said, don't you worry about their faces. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. I just told you at least five incidents of people that people that wanted to kill Jeremiah include his own family, his own hometown people. You talk about a tough audience, folks. You talk about it. Tough. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. Sometimes it's hard to look out there at you. And see some of the looks on your faces. Now it might be, not be that you want to kill me. But I'm thinking my goodness. I need to go shake that one. I can't tell if they're dead or not. Have I put them to sleep? It's tough sometimes looking at other people while you preach. It's tough looking out there and seeing those faces and those things that are going. And sometimes you don't get any feedback at all. And sometimes you get, I'm, I wish I didn't have to see. I'm not saying anybody's ugly, but, but I'm going to tell you what. Sometimes we wear our faces, we wear our hearts on our faces, wear our hearts on our sleeves, don't we? These people hated Jeremiah. God said, don't be afraid of their faces. He was going to stand before kings. Don't be afraid of that. He was going to stand before princes. Don't be afraid of that. You go and do what I have told you to do. And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Folks, when Isaiah received his great calling, remember Isaiah was his mentor. He says in Isaiah, he said, we hear those words, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. The house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. And then one of the seraphim flew unto me with a live coal he had taken with the tongs from the altar and he laid it on my mouth. God touched Jeremiah's mouth in the same way. He touched Jeremiah. Now listen, he, God didn't say, listen, you go out there and say whatever you want to say. You go out there and give whatever message you want to have. God said, you go and speak what I tell you to speak. And he took and touched his lips and ordained his lips to the message. Now I told you he wasn't very popular. And now we see why. God said, behold, I put my words in your mouth. Hear the words. See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. His message was not going to be popular. You know that little saying, I hear people say it all the time because people don't think about what they say. I hear people all the time say these things. I heard it, heard it said this week. The truth is welcome. That's a lie. The truth is not welcome many times. There are a lot of people that don't want to hear anything about the truth. There are a lot of people that don't want to hear about Jesus Christ. They don't want to hear about their sin. They don't want to hear about to change their lives. They don't want to hear God's word. They don't want to hear anything that you have to say that you can back up with this book. They don't want to hear that. The truth is not welcome. But Jeremiah was going to preach that truth. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you something, folks. Jeremiah wasn't welcome either. Jeremiah wasn't welcome many times, but there were uh, times that God took and placed tenderness in the hearts of others around him. There were times his life was spared, and times he was brought up out of the pits, 
There are times when his, his, his amanuensis, his secretary, Baruch, showed great compassion to Jeremiah because God had a plan for Jeremiah and so he was going to, Je he was going to take and preserve Jeremiah's life so that he could preserve his ministry. Why did he preserve his life and his ministry? Because God wanted his word to get out. And folks, of all the things I can say tonight, that's the most important thing. If we'll be faithful to God and to his word, God will make sure that word will not return void unto him. That word will do a work in the lives around us. It may not be welcome. It may not be what you or other people want to hear. But it will certainly be what God wants us to hear. It will certainly be what we need to hear. That word from God. Christ Jesus, we thank you for the prophet Jeremiah. Lord, he was not a popular man. And Lord, it's a lesson to us that we don't need to try, try to be popular. But Lord, we do need to be faithful. Faithful to you, to the calling that you have given us, and faithful to your word. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll continue to watch over us and bless us tonight, Christ Jesus, in your precious and holy name. For I ask it, Christ Jesus, in your most precious and holy name. May we see you as Jeremiah and Isaiah saw you. May we see you in truth and in glory. Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, folks. Have a great night.